What's up? Brandon Lilly here. It is cold in Kentucky. I'm going to share with you a saying that is famous in Kentucky. On a cold day, somebody will come up to you and no doubt they will say it is cold as a coal miner's ass. So try that on your friends. See how they like that. Anyway, well, I'm going to be talking about the use of the Olympic shoes in my training and why I'm doing so. I got them because I have a really bad problem of dipping in the squat, meaning I lean forward, tipping over, and I have a really bad or really weak lockout in the deadlift. So I got these shoes to practice, to you know, to really try to remedy both. So in training, except on my heavy days, my speed days, and my rep days, my feet are going to be very narrow, what you would call an Olympic stance, and um, my my depth is going to be as low as I can go and trying to bring up my glutes, my hamstrings. And I'm going to really be pushing that. You know, um, I get sick of people calling wide stance squats, Olympic squats. And I get sick of people saying that they're at depth when they're two inches high. I get sick of people saying they're ass to grass when they're at parallel. You know, if, if parallel is ass to grass and you got a problem, um, I would say that if your ankles and your, your butt or your, your hamstrings and calves aren't touching, then you're not bottomed out. So really get that down there, um, especially if you're labeling your videos. Don't make an ass of yourself by mislabeling them. You know, I've I've done that myself in the past as far as, uh, you know, posting things. Well, look at this squat. Look how great this was. And then looking back now, I'm embarrassed as hell of them. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? So anyway, um, you know, just be honest with yourself. Be critical of yourself. Be your toughest critic, and you will improve. Um, Hold yourself to a higher standard. Set yourself up for the highest level of self-respect, and nobody can nobody can touch you then. Um, but like I said, I want to be using these shoes. Uh, a lot of people have asked me if they should get them. Yeah, you know, it's too early for me to say, but the people that I have entrusted, you know, in communicating with them about them, are bigger deadlifters than I am. They're bigger squatters than I am, and. Uh, one of the things that they told me about for my squat was that I, I look like I squat too far back, like I'm doing a multiply squat or style, um, you know, and I need to really reverse that and bring my feet in a little bit and learn to squat more down. So I'm going ultra, ultra high bar, like right, literally right on the back of my neck and um, trying to learn to squat straight down and trust myself in that position. And, you know, it's been it's been hard because I used to squat like that. But um, when you go 10 years without really training your quads, I don't really understand why we have gotten to the point where we don't train our quads. They can make your legs strong, believe it or not. Um, you know, I, I feel uncomfortable doing it. So really trying to bring my quads back up and uh, learn to squat more up and down, learn to not dip myself forward because that's just a bad habit. You know, when you get a certain amount of weight, no matter how strong you are, uh, there's going to be a tipping point where when you get it far over so far, the weight's going to win. So just trying to correct some small technique things, learn some new things, try to recruit my glute uh, in a way that I've never done before. That's why I do the snatch grip deadlifts. I never felt my glutes fire like I do when I do those. So stay tuned. I'm going to be giving detailed progress about you know how my shoes are helping me. Chad Smith, I mean, he's... He's one of the strongest squatters in the world, and that's what he squats in. I mean, um, you know, he pretty much was was not a powerlifter, and then transitioned and did a couple powerlifting meets, and you know, set the world on fire there. You know, set an American record and total twenty one sixty five or something like that in his second meet after a twenty one hundred plus total on his first meet. <coughs> so, you can get strong without being powerlifting specific. Um, you know, like I said, there's going to be some stuff coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, some information about a couple of strongmen that are coming over to powerlifting and maybe some powerlifters going over to strongman. And, uh, you know, it's good. I think the more crossover we get, the better. The more blended the lines can be, the better the sports can grow. Because this stupid uh, line drawing and dissension of, well, I'm a strongman or I'm a powerlifter or I'm a weightlifter or whatever... Sure, there are going to be guys that are specialists in all three, but why not just be, hey, I'm fucking strong. You know, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, and I don't give a shit what you say. I don't give a shit what the internet says or anything like that. So when you get to that point, 
then you're pretty much a badass. Um, you know, I'm going to keep referring to him because I think people need to know about him. Mikhail Klokliev or Misha, uh, one of the strongest dudes in the world, just pulled 920, squatted 793. Basically, his butt was an inch off the ground or so. I mean, probably wasn't an inch. It was probably a little more than that. So all you internet haters, before you start watching the video and start writing comments about how I'm lying, uh, screw you guys. But anyway, he took a 793 to the floor and just absolutely exploded up with it. And really, there are people out there who are stupid enough to say he's not strong or, you know, he should have done more, this or that and the other. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that a 22-21 non-knee wrap total, the guy doesn't give a shit what any of you think. Um, he doesn't give a shit what I think. He doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks. I'm sure he's doing things on his own terms. He finished third at the world's strongest man while trying to qualify for the Russian Olympic team, meaning he probably wasn't cycled on very hot, very hard because he was trying to pass some drug tests. So think about that. Third place in the world's strongest man while he was trying to qualify for the Russian Olympic team. It's pretty pretty impressive. Oh, and he holds a Highlands game world record. And he clean and jerks 550. And he snatches 440-something. Pretty strong dude. Probably doesn't give a fuck what you think. He's just strong. And I think that's the problem in, the, in powerlifting especially is everybody cares what everybody else thinks and everybody else is so worried about what everybody else is doing. I swear to God, the day I stopped worrying about what the fuck anybody was, else was doing was the first step to me doing better myself because you're putting so much energy into everybody else, you're not even focusing on yourself. I train with guys. I've told them over and over and over, Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Stop worrying about what the dude on the internet is telling you when I'm sitting here watching you train four days a week. I see every single rep or set you do. Trust your training partners. And if they're not good training partners, find new ones. I mean, it's not that hard, people. I mean, we've just gotten to the point in this system where we're so, we're so fucking worried about everybody else and what they're doing. It's none of our business. The only time it's our business is on the platform is, is, you know, if they're getting calls that we're not getting, then yeah, it's a problem. But in training, learn from their training, take a little bit from it, uh, you know, but don't sit there and be critical of each other. What works for one doesn't work for another. Um, it's just, it's getting old, you know, people constantly bashing each other, talking shit all the time. Just get fucking strong, seriously.